Ya, konnichiwa. Okay, that's Japanese for hi. Good afternoon. I'm going to look at this paper, which is Science One Physics 2022, a GCE paper, and this video is going to be all about the answers for Section A for this paper. Let's get to question one. And my name is Manyepa. Okay. Your paper appears something like this. You will be you write your answers in these spaces, but for me, I'm just answering from the questions so that we can easily uh, revise together. So we get to question one. Instructions. Remember to always write your instructions, exam number, and um, all the important details, and then get into your business. So answer all questions on the answer grid provided in this question paper or in this section. Okay. Answer grid provided in this question paper. How can you answer all the questions? Anyway, it's section A on top there. So, A1, which of the following is not an example of a basic unit? My answer is what? Okay. This is the basic unit for current, uh, length, time. The what is a derived unit. Okay, it's a derived unit of the what can either be joule per second or it can be amp volt. Joule per second comes from energy or work over time. And then what volt comes from vi power is equals to vi okay and then here power is equals to work which can also be written as uh energy over time so this is a derived uh unit it's not basic number two the following diagram shows a broken ruler used to measure the length of an object that's our object the shaded region there then yeah so what is the zero error and actual length of the object my take was a Okay, the length of the object you can even count from here. Okay, you can even count from here, like you can measure. Let's try and count. That is, um, this is already uh, 5.9. Okay, 5.9, and the ruler somehow is broken. Okay, because this is a ruler, it's broken. It's starting to, it's like you have a broken ruler, then you are, you are trying to measure an object, and this ruler starts from this point here meaning you're not really starting from zero you're starting from above zero so you have a positive you're starting from the mark of 3.8 so you are above zero by 3.8 centimeters so it's the positive zero error okay so even as you measure you, sh you, you can be able to give correct measurements even if your ruler is broken provided you know to say my ruler has this much of an error so if you really want to measure the length just measure this is 6 point 5.8 so 6 centimeters the ruler is broken the beginning mark on the ruler is 3.8 so 6 i mean 5.9 minus 3.8 will give you 2.1 okay so you subtract the error from your total reading if the error is positive, you subtract it from your final reading. So our answer comes out as 2.1. Okay, I hope that was okay. So our answer is A. Number A3 or 3. A person's dropped an a person dropped oh what can't they say a monkey? A monkey dropped an orange from a basket on his head 1.8 meters to the ground. What with what velocity with what velocity does it strike the ground? That's the formula for our um, velocity of a freely falling object. That's our two a constant gravity then height. So if you do your math there, your answer is C. Uh, two times G times H. When you apply all of these, then you square both sides. Okay, by by squaring, I mean. You find the square root of both sides i don't i don't mean squaring but find the square root of both sides therefore when you, you find the root of this the root of this cancels out with the two you remain with just v then the root of this comes out as six our answer is c f4 the following graph shows the speed of a car of a car varying the following graph shows how the speed of a car varies with time um velocity is on the y time is on the x Okay, time 20. Okay, this is our final. That's our final there. Um, what was happening to the motion of the car between 10 seconds and 20 seconds? The acceleration of the car was, so look at 10, 20, the graph from this point to somewhere at that point. What was happening to the acceleration of the car? It was zero. 
y0 look at this mark here if this mark for example is a 10 at this point it will be a 10 even here it will be a 10 it will be a 10 up to this point it will still be a 10 meaning velocity is constant the graph is flat so velocity is constant and acceleration is the rate of change of velocity so if velocity is constant meaning that if the velocity is the same there is no change in velocity there's no change in the speed if you like it means there's no acceleration because acceleration is the rate of change so our answer here is zero or zilch if you like question a5 a uniform plank is pivoted at its midpoint two weights are added to the plank one weight on each end or each side of the pivot in the in the positions shown in the following diagram ruler pivoted here or a plank not ruler uniform plank meaning the plank whose mass is uniformly distributed throughout its 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 being okay its nature it um there's a mass here there's a mass there then uh, the pivot is down there yeah these are the distances and the like so a vertical force is applied at end x to balance the ruler okay uh what is the size and direction of this force this is grade 10 somewhere term 2 or so physics uh, moments and the like so uh if you really if if they say let's look at the main question again um pivoted at its midpoint two weights are added to the plank on uh one weight on each end of the pivot in the positions shown in the uh, in the following diagram so midpoint uniform plank um a vertical force is applied at end x to balance yeah this is the word i was looking for uh, if this thing is balanced then the turning effects or the sum of the turning effects or the sum of the of moments on both sides should be equal if it's balanced so the key thing or the first thing here to check to do is Calculate the moment brought about by this force and the moment brought about by this force then you conclude if this has to be an upward force or downward force and what its magnitude should be if this system has to be balanced or in equilibrium. So I did that here. Okay. So the end where there is 12 newtons has a moment of 24 and the end where there is the 8 newton force which is this end 8 times 2. The answer is 16 newton meter okay newton meter that those are the units so meaning that uh, this moment here is greater and this moment here is an anti-clockwise therefore it goes like that okay anti-clockwise moment so the anti-clockwise moment is greater so if this system has to be balanced the force x has to be upward do you understand the force x has to be upward because this is greater it's, it's it's greater meaning this system will be put in the direction of this moment downward on this side so if this system has to be balanced x has to be upward then by what magnitude should x uh, be for this system to be balanced i applied the i applied the the, the moment uh, the, uh, the 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 rule again okay uh, so the principle of moments again so this is my moment on the left side or the anti-clockwise moment and then uh, these are the two clockwise moments f1 d1 which is my this moment here 16 then this one is my anti-clockwise which is already 24 i did them here and then this is a clockwise moment we say it upward for this to balance since this one is greater this one has to be upward okay meaning it's a clockwise moment it will go like that clockwise moment so i put it on the clockwise side so for me to find my force i ha already have my distance two plus two remember distance has to be measured from the pivot so from here to that far end it's four from here to here two to here to there two so four four times x my x is my force my f2 here okay so i do my algebra here i transpose my 16 to this other side which gives me 24 minus 16 which is 8 uh then i divide by 4 on both sides giving me 8 over 4 is equals to x therefore x is 2 newtons upward so my answer here comes out as um oh what did i write what did i write it's supposed to be uh 2 newtons upward so my answer here is b okay yeah so my answer there is uh two newtons upward so x has to be upward if this system has to balance 
uh, A6. The following diagram shows a small pickup truck weighing 5,000 neutrons approaching a hill. It moves up the hill at constant speed, people. If the gravitational field strength is 10, calculate the work done in moving the pickup uphill. Okay, so weight and energy can be, um, what can I say, can be interchanged. Okay, so um, calculating the work done would be the same as calculating for the amount of energy transferred or converted from one form to another. The amount of work done is always equal to the amount of energy transferred from one um, form to another. So if we calculate for energy, it would be the same as calculating for work. If we calculate for work, it would be the same as calculating for energy. So this 5,000 neutron truck is lifted up 10 meters. The amount of potential energy to gain when it reaches that height will be equal to the amount of energy that would be required to lift it from this point up to that height. Okay, it doesn't matter the length here, the, the inclination, the gradient, as long as it has reached there, that would be the amount of work done. What only defines the amount spent, amount of time spent. So I just calculated this here MGH. MG, remember, MG is equal to, I mean, mg is weight weight is equals to mass times gravity so it's the same as weight times height mg which is mg is equals to weight so weight is this one here the weight of, of the car is 5000 okay so 5000 times 10 which is this 10 given to us it gives us 50000 joules if you write it in a uh, uh, scientific notation it will come out as 5 times 10 to the power 4 therefore you move the decimal point 1 2 3 4 which is this point here giving you 10 to the power 4 joules that will be your answer that will be your answer so calculate for the energy if you want to use the way the formula work is equals to force times distance you have the 200 but what is the force here okay what is the force applied it's not this one this is the weight of the car so there's no force here that is there to show you that just for you to calculate it using the formula of um uh work is equals to f d so this fails to apply but this understand that work done is equal to amount of energy converted uh a7 the following diagram shows a simple machine which is a wheelbarrow right there handles wheel yeah handles and wheel what type of simple machine is it the second class machine second class lever okay the second class lever okay and um generally we can just say it's a lever okay it's a lever a wheelbarrow is a lever number eight the following diagram shows the boiling point and uh boiling shows boiling water and ice in a test tube what is the aim of this experiment to show that water is a bad conductor of heat they heat from midway of the test tube then they put a wire gas to avoid or to prevent ice from going up because ice have, has got lower density than water water is a liquid the mode of heat transfer in the liquid is by convection so once the heat is once the liquid is heated the molecules or the liquid itself loses its density and goes upwards so it will mean it's possible for the water to boil up here and down here nothing much will happen the ice will remain in ice form because every every heated portion of water will go upwards Okay, due to less density instead of coming down to go upwards so conventional current will just be up there okay so that is being poor in conduction of heat um 9a which of the following equations best describes charles law of thermodynamics v over t is equals to k that is charles law okay v over t is equals to k that is charles law k is our constant Okay, this is Boyle's law. Yeah, Charles' law, Boyle's law, but the answer is Charles' law. There's also uh, Avogadro's law. There's also Gay-Lussac's law. So you can check those out. But answer here is V. Volume over temperature is equal to a constant. Um, in other words, um, these are, what can I say, directly proportional. Okay, they're directly proportional to each other. If you, if you increase temperature, the gas will expand, meaning... Uh, volume also increase if you reduce temperature the gas will contract meaning the volume also reduce direct proportion increases one even the other one increases but Boyle's law is inversely proportional you can check those out in your books in your notes 
A10, the following diagram shows show thermometers used in a school laboratory. TUVW. Which thermometer has the highest or greatest range and which thermometer has the greatest uh, sensitivity? Hmm, I really scratched my head on this one. You can simply put in your input if you feel my input wasn't uh, correct. My answer there was B. U has the greatest sensitivity and W has the greatest range. Therefore, W has a range from, the range is simply uh, the span, the span of the scale, 140 to 300. Okay, this is, this span is greater than this, this is 200, this is greater than 200. 300 minus 140 is what? Okay. So, it's equal to 300 minus 140 gives us something like um, 1 skist I think. 1 skist or so. So, the range looks bigger, but look at the beginning point. It's 140. So, the one with the greatest reasonable range is V. And then, um, the one with the greatest sensitivity my take was T. Okay. Because... Uh, it will be able to measure even the smallest measurements. Therefore, same expansion, but this one will be able to give you more detailed, um, uh, more accurate, or yeah, more accurate measurements in terms of temperature. So my answer there was B. A10 was B. You really have to look closer at this. Range is easier, but sensitivity, you have to look at the scales given to you. The scales and uh, what it would mean, same change in temperature, and the amount of, of expansion and also the scale itself this is up to 20 this is up to 40 okay this is up to 40 so same change let me just think again same change in temperature it reaches here it will just give you 0 0.25 maybe something like that but this one will be already at you know that much therefore this one will give you more accuracy i feel this one is um uh, has good high sensitivity because uh, it will give you more accurate measurements you are free to simply revise that one a11 wave of frequency 13,000 hertz travels 1300 meters in two seconds what is the wavelength of the wave so wave equation uh, velocity is equals to frequency times wavelength we're looking for the wavelength so velocity over frequency our velocity is not given but we have information that can help us determine the velocity of this wave so we say velocity is equals to distance over time or displacement over time which is can, which can be written as um speed is equals to distance over time so 1300 which is the distance over this time so when you divide this it gives you 650 meters per second so our velocity is 650 frequency is 1300 so wavelength is 0 0.05 meters which is our answer being a so be familiar with our formulas so when questions come you can know which formula to pick on 12 light travels from air into a glass block of refractive index 1.5 as shown in the yeah below this is the glass from air it's entering into air calculate the angle of refraction in the glass block so you have been given the refractive index and the relationship between uh, our refractive index and angle of incidence and angle of refraction is this one here snail's law so our answer comes out from this we simply make uh, our, our 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 subject so we cross multiply here we have the refractive index and we've got the angle of incidence which is key remember angles are measured against the normal this is our normal the normal is at right angle to the interface between the two media so n is equal to sine i over sine r and i've got sine r is equal to sine i over n so r is equals to sine i over n or sine inverse multiplied by sine i over n my sine i is sine skisti actually then my n which is refractive index is 1.5 i'm getting this from this skisti and then this 1.5 so it gives me this so sine inverse of this gives me 35 degrees and our answer is c our answer is c Remember, when you're calculating for the refractive index, your sine i is always the one in the media of less density. Even if these arrows are reversed, our sine i will still be skisti. Even if these arrows are the way they are right now, our sine i will still be skisti when you're solving for this. Uh, A13, a person standing 150 meters from a front 
from the front of the cliff claps his hands once and hears an echo after 0.9 seconds find the speed of sound in air okay so speed is equals to 150 over 0 0.4 s yeah 2.45 seconds speed is equals to triple three meters per second that was my answer so there are two ways of solving this it's either you realize that a person is standing 150 meters from the cliff that's the distance of the person from the cliff and then he claps and the sound takes this much to go and come back for him to hear the echo so the time taken is for going and coming so i divided this time by two so that i can have time for going only and for uh, therefore for moving from where the person is to the cliff is 150 meters so this is my calculation here if you want to take the time as 0 0.9 then you have to acknowledge that this distance is covered twice therefore the sound goes and comes back it takes 150 meters to go and it also covers the same distance 150 meters to come back so you can use this same formula as s is equals to 2d over time then just plug in uh, the distance here is 150 which is 150 times 2 over 0 0.9 because this time is also for going and coming the distance is for going and coming also that's why you have to multiply by 2 because we're only given distance for going but echo meaning that the sound went and came back so when you do the multiplication or the, the calculation using this formula it should be able to still give you 333 meters per second our answer there is d a14 which of the following does loudness of sound depend on amplitude amplification uh simply refers to the increase in the intensity of a, of, a, of a given sound wave okay or the displacement of a given sound wave so amplitude uh, frequency affects pitch okay wavelength uh yeah frequency wavelength pitch are much more are related to each other but amplitude is connected to intensity and loudness next question which is uh, magnetism i uh, relevant uh, final topic almost final topic let me just say final topic physics the following diagram shows a small compass close to a strong bar magnet a small compasses are sometimes referred to as plotting compasses they can be used to help you determine the direction of a given field around a given magnet they can help you tell if a ma which one is north which one is south of a bigger magnet where the arrow is on a compass is the north of that compass remember the compass needle is actually a magnet and the end where it has got an arrow is its north uh which diagram shows the correct compass direction if the end of the compass needle where the arrow is is north then it can't be like this this will ha have to repel each other it can't either be this it can't be this also the answer here is d north repels north therefore south is attracted to the north opposite poles attract while unlike poles repel our answer is d few more questions to go a negative charged road is held close to but not touching an insulated metal sphere as shown in the following diagram the road is negatively charged metal sphere remember in metals electrons are free to flow which diagram shows the correct charge distribution in the sphere this is something that is coming from the previous question where we talk about charges and pause the law is the same like pause like charges repel and like pause and like charges attract if this rod is negative it's going to repel the electrons in this region of the sphere therefore they'll go to this far end and this area will remain res respectively positive our answer will be b the answer is b there 17 which of the following circuit diagrams shows all the three resistors in parallel the answer is d they are all in parallel these are not in parallel this this is in series with this other guy this one is in parallel with the friends but in the, the other two are in series these are all in series this is in series to the power source only these two are in parallel but all of these here are in parallel our answer is d 18 a a 18 an ideal transformer has an input of 12 and output of 240 it has 2000 turns in the primary find the number of turns in the secondary ideal means that it's uh, 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 perfect or um, you know a system that has no energy losses what you put in is what you get out 
so ideal means a perfect transformer like 100 percent efficient transformer so just plug in the transformer equation here you have uh, um where you have a uh, secondary number of coils primary number of coils secondary voltage primary voltage so from our question uh, input means this is our primary primary is the input so input voltage is actually primary which is 12 secondary our output becomes 240 then primary coil is our 2000 right there this is our 2000 plug in the variables your answer after you cross multiply do your algebra will come out as 40 40,000 turns so this transformer has got 40,000 turns in its uh, secondary secondary coil okay so transformer equation can be completed where you can write it like um, Vs over Vp is equals to Ip over Is. And this side you can even plug in Vs goes with Ns and then Np. This is number of coils or number of turns in the coil. Uh, voltage input output then primary I mean current input output so look at this if you cross multiply this is primary power because power is equals to vi or iv so when you multiply this to iv or vi this is primary this is secondary power in the secondary so you can easily use this uh, formula by just like this or you remove that away you ignore current and you can still use these ratios just like in the calculation down there Get to our second last questions. Which of the following reductive emissions has the strongest ionizing effect? Alpha. Alpha particles are bigger, so they knock out other particles if they are allowed to uh, penetrate that given material. Their penetration power is quite low because they are massive, but their mass help or aids them or makes them to be perfect or efficient ionizing particles. So alpha. 20 iridium. Radium has a half-life of 1,600 years. Calculate the number of half-lives it will undergo for a 100 gram mass to reduce to 12.5 grams. You can use the formula sometimes, but this square method or the table method is still perfect. So quantity, initial quantity, time taken. Okay, this is time taken. Initial quantity. So initially, you have 100 um, uh, which is this hundred here and time is zero initially we have been told that the half-life of this radium uh, gas radium is a group 8 gas is 1600 years so 100 grams initially when time is zero um, will take 1600 years to go to half its quantity or for half of its quantity to undergo decay or for you to just remain with 50 grams of uh, the this uh, isotope intact Okay, radioisotope intact so it will take 1600 years for it to get to 50 grams it will take another 1600 years in total 32 so at this point it will be 32 for this 50 to become half and it will take another 1600 or 1600 for it to become 12 now and they want 12.5 okay so 12 grams actually this is supposed to be 12.5 because uh, uh 25 divided by half 25 divided by 2 gives us um, uh, 12.5. This is actually supposed to be 12.5 here. So in total, it will take 4,800 years. So how many half-lives are these? For from 0, you've got 1, 2, 3. Okay. So from 0, 1, 2, 3 half-lives. This mass has to undergo 3 half-lives of this long or length. Uh, for it to finally result into 12.5 grams of itself. So 3 is our answer there, which is A. Uh, this marks the end of this video, and uh, hopefully uh, you'll be able to follow me and uh, subscribe and recommend other people to simply just check out what's happening here and compare, contrast, correct, and just bounce off your thoughts on my thoughts and, um, and know one or two things. I'll see you in the next video. This is Manipa, and I'm saying bye-bye to you.